Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Guns Explained. I'm your host, Cameron Porter. Joining us today is an old friend. He's been on the show before, Jordan Mitchell from Salt Lake Wholesale Sports. Thanks for joining us, Jordan. It's good to be here, Cameron. So what we're doing today is we're going to do an experiment to show the difference between the rate of fire of a shooter using 30 round magazines and a shooter using 10 round magazines. So we're going to each shooter will go through 60 rounds total. So the 30 round shooter only has to go through two magazines while the 10 round magazine shooter has to go through six. We want to see what the rate of fire differences are, how much more quickly can a shooter with 30 round magazines get through all of the ammunition. So Jordan, what are some of the variables that we're going to be looking at here that we might want to consider other than the capacity of the magazine itself? We tried to control for what we could. Obviously we're shooting at the same place at the same time. We're going to be using the same firearm, the exact same types of magazines. Obviously there's a little bit of a of variable regarding how much training each shooter has. And aside from that, I think everything else is going to be pretty equal. But all of those factors can affect the rate of fire if we weren't controlling for them. Correct? Absolutely. The, uh, the qualifications of the shooter and uh, again, the type of magazine and the, the, the model of the, of the rifle being used. Yes, sir. Okay. So our other shooter that's going to be joining us is Sergeant Christensen from da the Davis County Sheriff's Office. He was gracious enough not only to let us in here at the Wasatch Shooters Association here in Davis County, but also be one of our shooters. Truth be told, he wasn't hard to convince. I think he just likes to shoot guns. <laughs> so we're going to go join him and we'll be right back. All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, we are ready to get started with our scenario here. We've got Jordan with 30 round magazines here. And we've got Sergeant Christensen with 10 round magazines. They've been instructed to shoot as quickly as they can, as long as they can control it. So as long as it remains controlled. So I will be timing Jordan with uh, my stopwatch here. And Nathan, uh, one of the members of our team, will be timing the sergeant uh, with his smartphone as well. Uh, and I will give them the go ahead as soon as I get out of the way. So, all right, gentlemen, we will go in three, two, one, go. Right. So that was a good first test. We had some interesting results. Uh, we'll post those under here. Uh, we, as you can see, the shooter with uh, Jordan with the 30 round magazines was able to get a lot of rounds off much quicker than uh, the sergeant here with uh, the 10 round magazines. A couple of things were pointed out, however, and that it, what number one is that the shooter with 10 round magazines, neither of our shooters here are prepared with what's called a duty belt or any kind of gear belt in which the magazines can be easily clipped to the belt and then therefore easily accessed. Also, they are, they're carrying about their equipment. They're not letting the magazines simply just drop to the ground, which could damage the magazines. These are all concerns that, uh, say, an active shooter or a, a, in a mass shooting that the, the perpetrator would have considered and would have taken care of. Also, uh, the uh, the sergeant shooting the 10-round magazines, though he was much slower, the accuracy of his shots uh, is much, much higher than the accuracy of Jordan's. Now, we all know that's just because Jordan can't shoot, but uh, <laughs> no. in reality, it really is. Uh, it's very difficult to control. It's very difficult to control when that high rate of fire. So what we've done is we've swapped sides. So Jordan will now be shooting out of the 10-round magazines, and he will be facing the same challenges that the sergeant had with no duty belt and taking care to protect the magazines from damage. And then the sergeant here will be using 30-round magazines. We're going to see how quickly they can go, uh, and then we'll compare the times. So I'll get out of the way, and I'll give them a countdown, and we'll get shooting. All right, we'll go in three, two, one, go.
Okay, that was a very fascinating uh, experiment that we did there. The results uh, blew my mind. They were very interesting. Here we've got, right down here, we put the results. So you can see uh, the the first round, the 60, the 30 round magazine shooter and the 10 round magazine shooter. And then you can see the second round, the 30 round magazine shooter and the 10 round magazine shooter. And you can see the differences in times there. And they're actually, they're quite different from each other. So uh, Jordan, the first question I have for you would be, uh, what are your thoughts after this experiment? My thoughts are we try to control as many variables as we can in any kind of a scientific situation. However, in a real life scenario, there are no ways to predict what may or may not truly happen. I'm fascinated with the results too. I think that both shooters did very well and I think that most importantly, we know that any, anyone who intends to do harm, obviously regardless of the magazine size, can do harm. Mm. And even with, uh, you know, looking at the discrepancy between the times of the 30 round magazine and the 10 round magazine, uh, in, a, in an active shooter scenario, you know, that's not going to have nearly as much weight because the shooter is picking his targets. Accuracy does matter. In this experiment, accuracy doesn't matter at all. But to an active shooter in that scenario, accuracy is an important factor, and they're not going to be just rattling off as many rounds as they can. They're going to be picking, uh, picking their targets. Uh, so I, I think that is an important variable as well. So a next question would be, what additional research or further experiments would you suggest to kind of get closer at attacking this issue? Uh, maybe have one shooter um, perform both sides of the testing multiple times to give us a little bit more of an average. But aside from that, um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate uh, you checking out this episode of Guns Explained. We want to do a shout out to our sponsors on Patreon. Uh, thank you so much for helping make Guns Explained continue to be possible. And if you want to check out our Patreon page, it's, it's patreon.com slash guns explained. Uh, give us a like, go ahead and like this video, share it with your friends, and like our Facebook page so you can keep up with our future episodes. Welcome back. We're back with Jordan Mitchell. He has an announcement that I am personally very excited for. Jordan, what the heck is that? We are looking at the ultra compact AR pistol called the Honos. It's going to be seven inches in total. The whole thing has a proprietary barrel disconnect. It can be assembled in just a matter of seconds and ready to go. It's going to be available exclusively through Salt Lake Wholesale Sports in about 60 days. Wow, that is awesome. So you literally just took that, put that together in like 10 seconds. Absolutely. Yeah, it can fit in the center console of my Tahoe. It's just an absolutely fabulous design. We're getting sub MOA groups and it's going to be one heck of a rifle. So you're not sacrificing any accuracy with that barrel. No, sir. No, sir. Just stay tuned. I'm sure we're going to be having a lot more fun with this Indeed. in the coming weeks. Indeed. We're going to be doing a couple of videos for this, and it's going to be so much fun. Sorry. I, I geek out when he tells me about this. So thanks, Jordan. Thanks for the announcement. Thanks and, to you, Cameron. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Okay. Thanks. We'll see you next week.